Hi everyone, welcome to CSC 348. I hope you're all doing well with regards to everything that's going on in the world. Um, my name is Iris Kohler, and I use she, her, hers pronouns. I'm currently a grad student at Cal Poly in the CSC department. Um, a lot of my experience in sort of just both through school and the research that I do, that I do is actually in all of the subjects that are covered by discrete structures. So I believe that means I'm, I'm pretty qualified for the class. Uh, this is the third time I've taught the class. So I feel like, you know, things have been going pretty smoothly. So hopefully, you know, we'll have a pretty good time. So with regards to the whole grad student thing, I know some students like the fact that I'm a grad student. Some students don't like the fact that I'm a grad student, but what I really try to do is use my experience of being a student. My undergrad was also at Cal Poly. So I try to use my experience of being a student to make sure that I remember how much work that this, uh, this major likes to throw at you all. So if you happen to be in 357 right now, which I know a lot of people take this class concurrently with 357, don't worry, I'm not trying to overload y'all with work. I'm trying to keep cognizant of the fact that you all have lives and you have physical, mental, emotional health that you need to take care of in this really stressful time. So I'm here to help you all learn, but I'm also here to help you all manage your health along with your learning. So what I've basically tried to do is make this class as flexible as possible in order to make sure that you all, no matter where you are, whether you're with your family or still in San Luis Obispo, whether you're still in the Pacific West Coast uh, time zone or whether you're halfway across the world, I want to make this as flexible as possible so that wherever you are, um, I want to give you the best quality of education I possibly can. So the way I'm going to try to do that is by teaching the class in sort of a flipped style. So a lot of the lecture material is actually going to be done through video, like what I'm doing right now. Uh, mostly it will be my voice over me working with a whiteboard. So if you think my voice is annoying, now's the perfect time to drop, <laughs> drop out of the class. And yeah, so I guess just a little bit more about me. Um, basically, I really love this material so much. Um, this was one of my favorite classes. This class actually is the class that basically led to me getting into the master's program here at Cal Poly. This, the work that we do here is so much fun. Um, it's nothing like any computer science class you've ever had. Some of you might have actually heard that it's uh, more of a math class, and it is, but it's not a math class that you've ever seen before. So what this class is really going to focus on is rather than learning anything about a specific language or learning a lot of things about good coding practice, for the most part, uh, what we're going to really work on is actually talking about things like fundamental mathematical logic. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the structures that we work with in mathematics. Uh, you might have noticed that the class is called discrete structures. I'll get into what that means, what a discrete structure actually is, but you'll see us actually mathematically define a lot of things that maybe you have seen before, like graphs will be mathematically defining. We'll even give some mathematical definitions of numbers. We'll also see a lot of structures that you haven't seen before, or you might not have seen before. So things like sets, um, functions, we'll really get into a deep dive of functions. And eventually we'll get into things like algorithms. So a more direct application of all of this work into your code. And I'd like to think that if you take a lot of what I'm trying to teach you all with regards to actually talking about logic and writing out and being able to justify logical statements to heart, that this will actually make you a much better coder. So... This class, it definitely seems like a weird, different alternative class, but I think it has a lot of really valuable resources in here. So I hope y'all are able to find as much value in it as I did, even if you're not planning on going into grad school, doing research, that kind of stuff. 
even if you're just going into the um, into Silicon Valley, you know, type of software engineering stuff, this uh, this material has a lot of use. So, despite all the challenges going on in the world, I'm really excited to see how this class goes because I've been thinking of running a class in this way for a long time. So I'm really excited. All right, so this is our syllabus. There's a few things I wanted to point out on here, but as you may have been able to tell from the email that I sent out before, we are using Canvas for everything in this class. It's going to be sort of our hub for accessing lecture material, for looking at, for taking those quizzes, for doing homework and tests and so on. So everything will be done through Canvas, and I have put a lot of work into making sure that it is as easy to use as possible. I actually was using Canvas last quarter, so I'm somewhat familiar with it this time around. So you might notice that the textbook is listed as optional, and the reason why is because I'll be presenting the same material as the textbook, but I'll be doing it in a different order. So while the textbook will cover some of the same things that I'll be covering, it may have references to concepts that we haven't talked about in this class yet. So the textbook really is a read at your own risk kind of thing. I'm not going to expect people to have to read it, but on the other hand, it is a good resource for people who want maybe another way of looking at the problems. Now, this textbook is, you know, of course it's a textbook. It can be kind of expensive, which is also another reason why I made it optional. I don't want people to have to pay extra money to be able to do this course. Now, as a professor, I cannot advocate searching for this textbook online, nor could I ever say how easy it is to find this textbook if you are looking in the right places. Also, I will have to, I, I will have to, if people post some links to the textbook on Piazza, I will have to get around to taking that down, of course, though it might take me a little bit to do that. So just putting that out there. I have a little bit of detail about the class structure, basically just outlining how we're going to do this class, saying that everything is going to be through, all the lecture material will be through video, class times will be dedicated to working through problems together and clarifying any questions. I have my grade policy here, homework 40%. There's eight homeworks, so 5% each. 20% uh, goes to the midterm, 25% goes to the final, 15% goes to participation, and that is entirely through quizzes that are associated with the video. So you might have noticed when you clicked into this video that this was actually listed as a quiz with a link to the video in the description. and these quizzes are basically going to be relatively easy, credit, no credit quizzes, where I want you to just answer some questions based on the lecture material, and hopefully that will give me a pretty good idea of what I can further address when I actually go into class time. So that all makes up the main part of the grade, and then I have this effort grade, it's up to 5% extra credit, just for putting in the time, putting in uh, time to basically try to do your best in the class. So if I see you coming into office hours a lot, or if I see you posting on Piazza a lot, for example, um, I will award bonus credit just for putting yourself, like just for applying yourself to trying to better yourself in this class. Um, I suppose I should talk about uh, what Piazza is. It is a discussion board Basically, uh, I will have a link to that in the uh, in Canvas under the um, course information module. So I will also send out a uh, invitation email to you all, or at least maybe by the time this video is up, uh, by the time you're watching this video, I will have already sent a uh, invitation link to the Piazza. We'll see how we'll see how all that goes. But basically. It's a place for you all to be able to ask questions or you know, that can be answered by either fellow students or instructors. And you will also be able to ask questions just to that uh, myself and my TA will can answer. Also, if you have a disability for which you are or maybe requesting an accommodation, 
contact the DRC if you haven't already. They're a fantastic resource. And let me know as soon as possible in the quarter so that I can make preparations for getting you whatever accommodations that you need. I will be putting subtitles on my videos, so hopefully that will help out quite a bit. And I also will be able to easily make accommodations in terms of testing time. So definitely let me know as soon as possible and we can get things planning easy, uh, early. Then I have this the university's bog standard statement on academic integrity, but I also put in my own thing at the very bottom. Basically, you probably will be able to look up answers to some of the questions online. I do not recommend doing that, especially if you go on places like Stack Overflow or areas like that. It's been my experience as a TA and as an instructor that Stack Overflow in particular, but really a lot of places online is super jank in terms of their solutions to problems. I've seen some of the weirdest problems show up there, and it's pretty much extremely obvious whenever someone is using a Stack, a stack Overflow answer. So unfortunately, if you use Stack Overflow to answer some problems, you risk the fact that you may be submitting a pretty janky answer and you might end up getting points deducted for that because of jankiness. One more thing I want to highlight on our on our Canvas page is the schedule. So this actually shows up, if we look right under this course information module, this will show up right there. And I have all these lists of lectures. Now, of course, this is uh, very early into the preparation period for spring quarter, so I don't have everything fleshed out yet. But you'll notice all these lectures. So all of these will show up as sort of quizzes under each week's module. For example, we can scroll down to the week one module here, and we have all of these quizzes. Again, not everything is fully fleshed out. These will actually have point values. But we'll see that well, you'll see a bunch of quizzes here. And the idea is that you will click the quiz, sort of like what you did with about the class, watch the video, take the quiz, all that kind of stuff. The thing is, is that even though this lecture is listed in the four, in the uh, April 7th slot of the schedule, I want you all to watch these videos before April 7th. So our class on April 7th will actually be about talking about these videos, doing maybe a few problems associated with these videos, and answering any questions that people have. And also, I can look at people's answers from the participation quizzes and see if there's anything I need to clarify. So it is mandatory for you all to watch the videos and do the participation quizzes before this class day. Now, for week one, I'll be a little bit relaxed with the deadline. I'll actually put it out. Um, I believe on Saturday is when I'll make these videos due, just for people who are still um, getting used to the course and all that. But starting in week two, all of the videos for, say, April 14th will be due on April 14th at 7 a.m. So you will have to take all those quizzes and watch all the videos before that time. All right, well, I hope that this helps serve as a brief introduction to the class. Um, I really want to emphasize that I know a lot of you are probably going through a lot of hardship right now. Definitely, uh, with everything going on in the world, this hasn't been easy for me as well. So I am doing my best to uh, stay compassionate to all of your needs as best as I can, and I will do my best to be extremely flexible. Um, I will put out there that I am also taking 12 units of classes at the same time as teaching this class and another class. So it's going to be a little bit of a rough quarter is what I'm guessing, but I'm going to do my best to be there for all of you in as, as much as possible. Teaching is my top priority this quarter, so I want to make sure that you all leave this class with as much knowledge as you can. Because really, like I said at the beginning of this video, this knowledge is extremely important. It's going to make you all into, hopefully, into really good coders. So, yeah, that's the introduction to this class. Uh, please watch the rest of the videos before the first day of class. 
So yeah, that is the introduction to this class. I'll be sure to add on any more information if I realize that I forgot something, but hopefully I will see you all at the beginning of, uh, at the first day of class at bright and early 7 a.m. at on April 7th. So I'm looking forward to it. I think, I think we'll really be able to overcome the challenges of an online course in a really good and productive way. So if you chose me to be your professor for CSC 340, uh, thank you so much for putting your trust in me. I promise I won't let you down, or I will work my hardest to not let you down given the present circumstances. If you were stuck in my class because it is the 7 a.m. section, my condolences. Uh, I know I'm certainly going to have a hard time getting up in time for a 7 a.m., and I imagine I won't be the only one. Hopefully, we'll still be able to have some fun. Uh, at the very least, if you don't, if this type of material isn't your thing, hopefully it won't be too terrible of a class. <laughs>